A seatbelt can stop you from going into a store. A seatbelt can stop you from climbing a tree. It can stop you from flying or from rolling down a hill. A seatbelt can stop you from doing a lot of things, like crushing bones and damaging vital organs. It can even save your life. That's why we enforce seatbelt laws, to save lives. So buckle up every trip, every time. Click it or tick it. Paid for by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Are there any Vikings running backs you should be targeting? Which Saints will be the beneficiaries of the absence of Brandon Cooks? And should you be investing in Hunter Henry or Antonio Gates at their current ADPs? Plus, a career $25,000 winner in the FFPC, Ryan Santos, drops in to give us his thoughts on waiting on quarterback, draft experts, roster construction, and much more. We've got a great show for you. Dave Gerzak is here. I'm Eric Balkman. Stick around. Your high-stakes fantasy football hour starts now. Thinking of a master plan. Cause ain't nothing but sweat inside my hands So I dig into my pocket all my money spent So I just deep up, still coming up with lint So I start my mission, leave my residence Thinking how I could I get some dead presidents I need money, I used to be a stick up kid So I think of all the devious things I did I used to roll up, this is a hole up, ain't nothing funny, stop smiling, you still don't nothing move but the money, but now I learned that. Broadcast live and heard around the world, you are now listening to the most entertaining hour of radio on the planet. It's the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour presented by MyFFPC.com with your hosts Eric Balkman and Dave Gerzak. The High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour is your home for football analysis from the best fantasy players in the world. And now, because no one else was available, here are Eric Balkman and Dave Gerzak. I don't like to dream about getting paid, so I dig into the books of the rhymes that I made. Thank you kindly, Rob. Greetings and salutations, all of you Balkaholics and Gerzak and addicts. Welcome to the latest episode of the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour presented by MyFFPC.com right here on the Fantasy Sports Radio Network. I am your slightly above average host, Eric Balkman, and my co-host, is indeed the patron saint of fantasy football. He is the Dizzle. He is Dave Gerzak. Coming up on tonight's show, we read between the lines of what the Titans are planning on doing with their backfield this season. We play a blind resume game with an underrated wide receiver. And Ryan Santos, a winner of more than $25,000 in his FFPC high-stakes fantasy football career, shares his thoughts on the historic rookie tight end class and competing in early season draft experts leagues. Shout out to the chat room right now. Feel free to post any questions you might have in there. If you want to connect with us on Twitter, you can do so at HSFFHour, at Eric Balkman, at David Gerzak, and of course, Ryan is on Twitter at FFLinks. You can post on our Facebook page at Facebook.com slash HSFFHour. If you want to chime in and talk with us, give us a call, 347-426-3682. That's 347-GAME-OBA. You can also email the show at our inbox at highstakesfantasyfootball at gmail.com. If you have any questions for us, our producer, mutual friend, and the man behind the glass, Rob, will be getting those questions to us tonight. Our audio engineer, Bryce, also working tirelessly, Tyler, Tyre Leslie, to bring you the show tonight. And I'm sorry, I started drinking early, apparently. Tyler Leslie. We'll get, yes, we'll get to all the chat room questions, uh, tweets, emails, in the fantasy feedback segment later on in the show. Uh, we, uh, first of all, I want to, um, thank everybody who's tuning in and listening live on a special Thursday night. There's a basketball game going on. I don't was tell, told. Don't tell them. Yeah. It's a blowout. Don't even tune in. Yep. Just listen to, listen to the show. We'll be soon. The main event early bird. For those of you who are listening live, you are in for a treat because in case you did not see the FFPC email or blog today, it has been extended for one day, which means you have roughly, oh, I don't know, four plus hours to get in on your five, five plus hours. Just about five hours. All right. Almost five hours. Yeah, four plus hours, whatever. You're right. Five minus hours. We're not going to argue tonight. You're, T you're, minus five hours. Oh, yes, totally, we are. You're totally right. You have no idea how the ratings boost we got <laughs> last week after that Treadwell discussion. But check that out on MyFFPC.com. A hundred, uh, yes, $100 off your first main event team. You can take advantage of that until midnight Pacific time tonight. Uh, register for your rooms at Planet Hollywood as well. Many of the FFPC players uh, filling those up with the great discounts that we are uh, offered by Planet Hollywood for uh, the event that's taking place with the FFPC out in September. And reminder, the Football Guys Players Championship kicks off on Sunday. Sunday afternoon, we will have the first, uh, I think there's like four drafts that day, four or five drafts that day. So we'll have the first four drafts going on of the 2017 FPC 
uh, that is going on starting Sunday, so make sure you register for those. And if you don't want to register for Sunday, there's a ton of drafts leading all the way up to kickoff of uh, the NFL season uh, coming up in September. All throughout the summer, you can literally plan your summer at myffpc.com right oh, now. Bucky, can I interrupt you? What yes. About, what about the awesome news that happened tonight? Uh, the awesome news that happened tonight. This is the the very first non-commissioned draft. Oh, yeah. We are putting the commissioners yeah. out to pasture. That's right. The robots are taking over. They, they really are. And uh, uh, we had a you, our you first – was it crying, a 35? Yeah, 30, 35. You yeah. were crying a little bit. A little yeah, bit. No, little whatever. Bit I'm good. We, I have the show. We have other things you can do. Over, right, like yeah. Like picking up and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> we, the, listen, if you ever get a robot that can handle a mop as good yeah, as I do, yeah, they're not that good then, then we're screwed, or I'm screwed. But uh, yeah, we had a. Com- there's plenty of commissionless, uh, commissionerless drafts uh, right now at myffpc.com. So if you ever register for one and it's got the little Ghostbusters thing without the ghost in it, that means there's no commissioner <laughs> I for that. I always use that phrase too. Now listen, every draft at the FFPC is great, but wouldn't you like a 21-time award-winning <laughs> broadcaster to commission your live draft for you? Maybe we should put like a little B next to the draft I commission. That's see, actually, oh, that's see, cool. uh, see, uh, well, of course, everybody would think that it's Bryce then doing that. No, but I mean, it would be it would be actually be pretty cool if we could do that where we where it actually list the commissioner. Yeah, yeah. But, but you but know, we, but we swap it, yeah, so swap. much. Yeah. That'd be kind of. A, I mean, that'd be something that other places that don't have anything else to do with the rest of their time would do, like where they manually update their message board with every person who enters a league. Speaking of those leagues, online satellites available at myffpc.com. <laughs> Dynasty startups, live high stakes leagues, definitely taking registrations for those right now, but they are filling up fast. So if you want to get in in another high stakes league while you're out at Planet Hollywood, uh, make sure you're registering for those right now so you are not left out in the cold. Right, enough ads. Football guys, Roto World and Rob, all responsible for tonight's rundown, kicking things off. James White has firmly entrenched himself as the passing down running back. For the New England Patriots, according to a story done by Mike Rodak from ESPN.com, James White did catch 60 passes for New England last year. That number could be even higher this year. He is expected to be the passing down guy to uh, go with Mike Gillisley, who should be the first and second down guy for New England, or at least that's what the beat writers are projecting. Deion Lewis, sort of an afterthought, maybe as the number three running back there. James White going at the 1208 in FFPC drafts right now. Mike Gillisley being selected at the 812. That is the 812. You excited about either of those spots for either of those running backs right now, Dave? Well, James White's going to be moving up for sure. Uh, After this news? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He'll probably move up into that same range as Gillisley. I would, uh, I like James White. You know, he proved a lot, actually. In a PPR league, you get one point every catch. Point. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. The, the fact that he's going in the 12th, there's – I mean, we're going to talk, we have been talking about it, these insane values that you can get when you're drafting right now. And the Football Guys Players Championship, that'll kind of skew it a little bit more. Um, but uh, you, won't get, you won't be getting these good of values for very much longer. So definitely, uh, if you're drafting right now, there's good values to be had. I think James White's one of them. What I do think you make? all the way through June even, June and July, until you get to really the training camp. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. here's some news, but you know, a lot of other stuff, there's not really much. That's news. true. That's true. Um, Mike Gillisley at the A12. I don't mind him either. I was going to say, yeah. yeah, because like you're, you know, Blunt was so great. He's, I mean, had four, four, 49 touchdowns last year. <laughs> Did he? Yeah. Oh, no, sorry. It's, it's, 59. It might even be possible. I missed 10 of them. I mean, he really had like 18 or something like that. It was yeah, crazy. it was. It was 18. It was insane. So, you know, the point being is that the Patriots score so many points, and they're going to win the Super Bowl this year, as you're well aware, right, Falky? Definitely not well aware of that, Dave. <laughs> Definitely not well, well aware of that. Well, made a bet today that the Patriots with, are not. With audio engineer Bryce. With Bryce. Bryce bet on the Patriots. Well, there was, there, was a thing, there was a thing that came up on our phones. This is how it started. Uh, from ESPN. Let's do the short version because we don't have all, all right. The FPI index came out for ESPN, and they had the Patriots as uh, having a 34.7% chance of winning the Super Bowl. I said that's ridiculous. I said it was bunk. That's, that's like one out of three, okay? That's, yeah. that's, I, I exactly. said that's way too high. So, and Bryce is just. Look, the roster got so much better, bulky. They're way better than they were last year. They got the best coaching staff in the NFL. What's not to like? I said, okay, so two to one odds. He has the Pats. Bryce, I have everyone said, else. Bryce said that's fair. And he said that was fair. And there so, you go. yeah. So we got 20 on it. I'm excited, I'm excited to see how it goes. Right. And Bryce hates the Packers and hates Aaron Rodgers. So we were hypothesizing that the best yeah. possible outcome would be the Packers. Rodgers running in a touchdown yeah. to defeat the Patriots in the uh, And you know how he's going to run in that touchdown? Brady's going to throw a pick six to him. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers will be playing safety. 
Uh, Chad Williams received some lofty praise this week from Larry Fitzgerald, his new team, uh, teammate uh, on Arizona. He said that the uh, third round pick out of Grambling reminds him of his former teammate Anquan Bolden in terms of the strength of their hands. This is Josh Weinfuss's story on ESPN.com. Uh, another good story, more good vibes coming from uh, uh, Arizona about Chad Williams. He is a player that a lot of dynasty players are excited about. We, we kind of touched on the show earlier uh, a couple of weeks ago. We kind of we're kind of off him for redraft, and I think FFPC players are too. Going at the 2708 of draft experts leagues right now, uh, John Brown really the only other big time threat at receiver now that Michael Floyd's gone. We have JJ Nelson, Jerron Brown, and Andre Ellington who and I Andre Ellington was moved to receiver about, it's this such year. It's a big deal to move him to receiver. Right? Yeah. Yes. When, this, he'll get caught, but don't worry about it. you know he's now a receiver. Yes. So he's a receiver. So you know you look but in at dynasty. We love this Chad Williams. We do. And, uh, you know, you look at the other players um, in here, and David Johnson's going to catch a lot of passes this year, too. We, we obviously know that. He's going to have a great tight end option there, Dave. I they don't know. They use the tight end option. Right. Tight. Okay, that's fine. But that, that just goes to my point even more that there, there's not a threat to steal targets there. You have Fitz. You have Brown, who had the sickle cell. And Chad Williams, I don't know. I, I'm starting to kind of like him a little bit for redraft. He could be the type of guy. Now, he, he, he'll probably be spotty. But in these DE leagues, yeah. he might be a guy to get in, you know, around round 20. Yeah, 27th round is insanely free. Why it's not? free. Yeah, it is yeah. free. Totally. totally free. So, I mean, the thing I was going to mention about him, I mean, he did have 21 reps on the bench press at 204 pounds. I mean, that's, an, that's a really, really strong bench for anybody. And that just shows I mean, he's got great grip strength in the strong hands. Totally makes sense. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's not just his hands that we're excited about. I mean, he, he's got to get his route running. Um, you know, under control, but I think you'd say that for any rookie receiver. Yeah, he ran a four three seven at his pro day. I mean, that's a pretty at two hundred and four pounds. I mean, it's nuts. As Jimmy Johnson used to say, you can't coach speed. <laughs> Dalvin Cook, speaking of speed, has signed his four year contract with the Minnesota Vikings. Not that slow. Yesterday, We're yeah. Bad, uh, financial terms, I think, have now been disclosed. Uh, you know, it's it's a rookie contract. The same as everything. Yeah, else. Craig Peters from Vikings dot com had the story. Uh, Delvin Cook, uh, drafted in the second round by uh, the Minnesota Vikings, uh, has good vision in the field, uh, needs to be, uh, stay healthy. He needs to learn how to hang on to the football. Way too many fumbles at Florida State, and he needs to improve his pass protection. Uh, he's already got the pass catching down. Pass pro needs work. You look at the Vikings uh, running backs here this year, Dave, and I'll just I'll lead this off. I'm not excited about any of these guys at their current spots. Uh, Dalvin Cook at the 602, Latavius Murray at the 905, Jared McKinnon going at the 2301. And even at that, I don't even think that's good value necessarily getting McKinnon there. Um, I, I'm staying, I mean, the, the Vikings offensive line still is not great. I view them as a team that will might have to rely upon uh, throwing to catch up in, in a lot of games this year. So I'm just not excited about uh, any of these Vikings running backs. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't be really excited. I, I, I don't know, I've never been a Latavius Murray guy. I like McKinnon, and, and they actually said McKinnon has gotten. Yeah, I've heard this. He looks good, and yeah. better shape, and all that yep. stuff. Dedicate, you know, finally learn, finally learning to play running back. Maybe I would take a look at Cook in the sixth round if he fell maybe to the six oh five, six oh seven, whatever it, in that range. And then I would actually consider McKinnon in the twenty third as not really a handcuff, but just another something that's he's kind of on the roster. So effectively, yeah. you're just betting against Murray. Yeah, I'm not going to say you're an idiot for liking McKinnon in the 23rd round. I can tell you, I will not, will not be drafting him there. In any That's DEs. too soon for you. Yeah, just whatever. I mean, but again, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you could say oh, I'm looking at Jerry Rice in, in the last round of my DEs. I, whatever. That's fine. Last round. Who cares? <laughs> uh, but Dalvin Cook, if I am in a situation where I go zero RB and I have like four receivers and a tight end or something like that, then yeah, Dalvin Cook would make some sense in the sixth round, but he's not. I'm definitely not targeting them, him there. I'm not like but looking. That's how you play football, not fantasy football. Now you always just go for those receivers, so you're gonna have to be looking at Mr. Zero RB. No, 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 life. no. I that, that was your license plate. That, first of all, I don't own a vehicle. That would actually be kind of cool. Hang on, let me write that one up. Zero, oh, RB. zero RB. Yeah, with the actually the zero. we can actually that's four life. So how many is that? How many left? Four, five, six, seven. Oh, that's eight. So. You take out the E, take out the last E for zero RB for, for Lyft. Yeah. Um, nice. cause obviously everybody would know that <laughs> you can actually contact the, Nobody the, the state the of, fantasy player. exactly, which is all we care about. Anyway, you can contact the state of Wisconsin DOT and send them an email and ask for if certain license plates are available. We can actually email them. Should we? We'll check it out. I, and you know what, Rob, make a note of that. Let's email them right now. Maybe there's zero maybe RB for Lyft. Emails, emails no. at, at 914. They are definitely not. 
So let's see if, if we can make that happen. Might have to invest in it. But I'm definitely not – see, I couldn't get it because I'm not zero RB for life. I talked to you about this last year. I, I, at, in fact, I, what I talked to you when I, when I really originally said this on the show, we did like sort of our wrap-up season finale show. I said the thing that I learned is not necessarily to devalue running backs, right. but to really value, regardless of position, how involved they are in the offense. If it's a running back that's heavily involved, I'm on him. If it's a receiver that's heavily involved, I'm on him. Tight end, I'm on him, you know. Um, and so I, and the guys that make plays and stuff? The, guy, the guys that have the most opportunities to make plays. Yeah. The guys who are touching the ball the most. And, and so, yes, this is fantasy football 101. Okay. It's, well, a, re- it's a review. Then, then maybe it's a um, – it's I'm having my fantasy football renaissance because I'm <laughs> definitely not going to be going – You're going back to basics. Thing. You've gone too, you know, too far. We had the two dynasty startups in the Kentucky Fantasy Football State Championship earlier – with uh, Kurt and, and uh, the real Leroy, and we didn't go zero RB in those, and we came close. But we didn't do <laughs> we didn't do go zero RB in those. So I, I you got I, one and a half RBs. You got Lacey. Yeah, but that was solely. He's like my number three. He's not a, back he's in, not two fifty. Like, no, it's hard. I can't even rip on him that much. Oh, you could. Uh, let's talk about uh, different teams' running backs here. Uh, Terry Robisky, the offensive coordinator for Tennessee, says. He is uh, going to find ways to use both DeMarco Murray and Derrick Henry. You can find more information on this story at titansonline.com. Last year, uh, DeMarco Murray handled more than 60% of Tennessee's carries when both he and Henry were healthy. Henry uh, definitely took on a bigger role with the team down the stretch. Uh, Mike Malarkey has remained adamant that DeMarco Murray is his workhorse. Uh, you look at their ADPs. This is kind of interesting. DeMarco Murray at the 205, Derrick Henry at the 805. What do you make of Terry Robisky, the offensive great coordinator, coming out and saying he's going to find ways to use both these guys? What do you make of that, your, your initial yeah, reaction? I think I don't think much of it. So when, because, he, because when he also is adamant that um, no, Mal- work for Mike him. Malarkey is adamant. Oh, Malar- okay, yeah. so, so, so Robisky comes out and says this. I, I think that Malarkey's like, Murray's our guy, Murray's our guy, but Robisky is saying, like, look, he is. But Henry's going to have a much bigger really awesome. he's going to have a much bigger role than than he did at the start of the season last year. Yeah, you know what's funny? The funny thing about uh, Murray and Henry is last year Murray's ADP was about you know round or two lower, whatever it was. Right. And Henry's was a couple rounds higher. So now Murray has this great season. Henry was just okay. Right. But Murray's a year older. He's almost out of the NFL. I mean, he's that old. Running backs die off that fast. Right. And you know Henry's still got super young legs, and he's cheaper. I'm totally interested in Henry. Yeah. Murray at the 205, it's it's, a, it's pretty pricey. I mean, that, that, you're really you're yes. paying for his ceiling pretty yep, much. You definitely are. So I would be staying away from him there. And then Derrick Henry, I'll tell you this right now, 805, enjoy it while it lasts because he will be shooting up to the sixth round easily, probably within the next three to four weeks. Really? Yeah. Right. I'm pretty sure I'm, of that. I'm noting. Uh, last thing I want to get to before uh, we got to take a break, and then we'll have Ryan Santos, a $25,000 career winner at the FFPC on the other side. Uh, just, and we're going to talk to Ryan about this a little bit, but I just I felt this was worth bringing up. The Santa Rosa Press Democrat uh, says that Carlos Hyde has looked, quote, like the slowest and most indecisive running back on the team <laughs> at OTAs. Uh, Hyde is learning a new offense. This is Kyle Shanahan's outside zone system after he did very well in Chip Kelly's shotgun-based zone read scheme in 2016. The Santa Rosa Press Democrats beat writer Grant Cohn, who wrote the story, says Hyde, quote, doesn't seem to have the vision to succeed in huh. Shanahan's offense. Interesting. This is something that John Lynch uh, said publicly in yep. press conferences uh, mm-hmm. about Carlos Hyde, uh, not necessarily being the best fit for Kyle Shanahan's offense. And Cohn also said that he thinks San Francisco should trade Hyde to a team that runs the zone read. Uh, okay. You look at the... Can I give you my hypothesis? Oh, okay, go ahead. Do that first, and then I get a question for you. Okay. I think Lynch approached the fake news, Santa Rosa Press Democrat, and said, hey, do you want any access whatsoever to Kyle Shanahan, the new coach? And they're like, yes. And they say, all right, this is exactly what we want you to write. And they sent over exactly, we want an excuse, a way to get rid of Hyde. So put out the story about how he sucks, he's slow, he's terrible, okay. and you got to get rid of him. That's an interesting take. Exactly. I know I've been watching House of Cards a little bit. Before. Right, yeah. So I'm getting the conspiracy theories flowing. Okay. Not to mention real life, you know, Twitter and all that. All right, now I want to bring it back to reality here for a second. Carlos Hyde going at 502 in FFPC leagues. Dave, is there a better value out there than Joe Williams at the 1504 in FFPC drafts? I don't know if there is. I can't believe he's won the 15th round. 15, 15th round, you can get Joe Williams right now, people. It's pretty much like, yeah, but the coaches are like, we love Joe Williams. We hate Carlos Hyde. We paid off 
the newspaper in town yep. to get rid of Carlos Hyde. Yeah, I don't, I don't know where this whole payola thing is coming from, but well, that's totally true. Maybe you have something here. You were certainly onto the whole Jimmy Graham, Drew Brees love triangle before anybody else was. That's so. unproven too. Yes, yeah, well. In, the story's still in, in up. quotation marks, proven. The story's still up there. Yeah, well, it's proven that we will have a guest on the show tonight. He is coming up right after this. Ryan Santos coming up here on the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour. Here from a career winner, $25,000 in the Fantasy Football Players Championship. Eric Balkman, Dave Gerzak, talking to him live right after this on the Fantasy Sports Radio Network. I'm Eric Balkman. He's Dave Gerzak. Thank you so much for tuning in to the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour right here on blogtalkradio.com slash HSFF, as well as the Fantasy Sports Radio Network and whatever venue you're using to download our show. We just certainly appreciate it. We also certainly appreciate our next guest, which is uh, coming up right now. Let's uh, give him the introduction that he deserves. He is a police officer who has been playing fantasy football since college, more than a decade ago, he lives in New York and is a Giants fan, but you probably know him a little bit better as FF Links on Twitter, uh, who is uh, tweeting out draft boards that he's in, fantasy football thoughts that he shares regularly. He's won more than $25,000 in the FFPC alone. We're thrilled to have him on the show tonight. Please welcome Ryan Santos. Ryan, thank you so much for coming on the show tonight. Oh, thank you guys for having me. It's always good, Dave, when you have... Uh, not only a knowledgeable player on the show, but a player who's a fan of the show. My show sucking yes. up, Bulky. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's so great, Ryan. We, First time, long time, guys. We appreciate you listening, and just ballpark it at, at 0% to 100%. How much uh, of is this show responsible for how successful you've been <laughs> in fantasy football? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's got to be 110. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it, it's like a love fest going the, on. The thing is, there was a correct <laughs> answer to that question, and he nailed it. Right, so man. that's that's nice pretty job, fantastic. Ryan, Ryan uh, congrats on on cashing uh, in more than a dozen satellites last year, including uh, three 250 draft experts titles. Did you find yourself hitting on uh, on a lot of value earlier in the drafting season last year? Yeah, I found uh, there were some guys earlier, like Blount, who uh, was going maybe like the 18th round early on in the draft season. But at the same time, you also got guys like Josh Gordon, who I was drafting in the seventh, eighth round, who uh, hurt me a little bit. Well, Could Josh go either Gordon. way. I was going to ask – go, go ahead, Dave. Because I, I, I know you want to get this Josh Gordon thing off your chest. You know what? I'm not going to do a Josh Gordon. Man. He's, <laughs> he's very annoying. Just every other week. <laughs> very, very, very annoying. Ryan, let, let me ask you just as a philosophical question. When you're doing these 28-rounders, um, you know, early March, April, May, what have you – when you're doing these drafts, you obviously want to get a core that, that you can count on for the rest of the, for the entire season. At what point in these drafts do you start taking flyers like Josh Gordon, guys that you know, you're necessarily just looking at the ceiling and not so much the floor? Is it the seventh, eighth, ninth round in that area where you start taking, uh, you know, few, or start taking more risks? Yeah, especially early on. I like to take the guys with the lower floor early on, guys who I know we're going to have a role. And then uh, usually like Probably past the 10th round is when I'll start taking a little more flyers. All right, let's talk about non-flyers. The rookie drafts are pretty much complete. Yes, all these locked-in, non-boss guys, the rookie yes. drafts. Ryan, you know, if, I don't know if you pay any attention to the recent tight end classes where you have studs like Austin Spray and Jenkins, who, by the way, is supposedly looking good and off the, off the alcohol. Um, yeah, who are some of the, you know, some of these, these rookie tight ends have been so bad, I can't even remember any of the guys. Who, who's been recent tight end other than him? ASJ... Well, for rookies? Yeah. Henry was good last Austin year. Austin Hooper? What about him? Yeah, he sucked. He didn't suck. He came on towards the end of last <laughs> he year. He kind of sucked. Okay. For the most part, he, for most of the season, he was a non-factor, yes. Yeah. Who's the other guy? There was another. Anyway, there were. For tight end last year? Rookie? Ryan, they've all sucked recently. <laughs> we don't know any of them, yeah, but they all The reason we can't it's name them Seth, is because they suck so bad. Seth DeVal? What about him? He wasn't yeah. very good. He went to Princeton and he got drafted in like the fourth round. He's actually quite athletic. Hey, real. And had they not taken a joke, we'd probably be doing. Real that. quick, uh, Ryan. Ryan, eventually we'll talk you to you. Know, just I, we will ask you a question. I just <laughs> wanted to bring this up to you. I just read this. You remember Larry Allen, the Hall of Fame guard for the Dallas Cowboys? Yeah, I know who he is. His kid is an offensive lineman playing college football as well at guess what university? That's right, Harvard. Really? Yes, his son That's plays awesome. on the offensive line for Harvard. Pretty That's crazy. Great. Anyway, go ahead. Like, hey, do you want to play in the NFL? Eh, I, I'm good. I'm just going to take the degree and go into the finance. Maybe he'll practice. do. Maybe I'm he'll do both. I'm going to go to Goldman Sachs. I mean, is that okay? Yeah. All Give right, that. Ryan, did you grab any rookie tight ends uh, from this year's class? They're all going to be studs. Put it down. 
Yeah, in redraft, I really won't draft too many rookie tight ends. Uh, the only guy I've really been drafting is Everett in like the 26 to 28 range, if he's there. Uh, as far as Dynasty, though, uh, Njoku was the one guy that I was targeting. Uh, I mean, for him to be 20 years old and for them to cut Gary Barnage right away shows that he's going to have a, a role right off the bat. That's such a, I just thought that was so funny. What did Barnett just yeah. call him up and tell him to go blank themselves? Yeah. <laughs> and then Pretty he's much. like, all right, you're cut. Hey, uh, Ryan, let me ask you about Gerald Everett because, uh, you know, he's – Sean McVay is expected to use more two tight end sets with uh, Everett and Tyler Higby uh, in Los Angeles this year. You look at those that, – that combo of guys, what is it that you like necessarily about Everett that maybe you don't like as much with Higby? Uh, it's not really that I like Everett better than Higby. Uh, just Higby's going a little bit earlier, especially in redraft. I'd rather take the flyer in Everett in the 26 through 28 round. With uh, with Brandon Cooks, Ryan, uh, now moving up north to uh, New England. Well, I don't know if he moved, but he's going to be playing at home <laughs> games in New England. Uh, who do you see as the guy in New Orleans that's actually going to be picking up the slack when it comes to all the targets that Cooks had last year that he will not have in New Orleans? Who do you expect to be the biggest beneficiary in that offense? Uh, this is going to be one specific beneficiary since they spread the ball out so much, but two of the guys who I've been drafting the most are actually uh, Ingram and Ted Ginn. Uh, I really like Ted Ginn in the 12 through 12 through 14 range, uh, as, especially as a best ball guy. I wouldn't draft him in a, redra- in a redraft league, but uh, Thomas is a guy I'm who... I was just going to ask you, well, finish your thought with, with, um, with Ginn and Thomas here, and then I want to talk a little bit about Mark Ingram, but go ahead. Uh, I think Ted Gitt is the perfect best ball guy. He's a guy who's going to catch, uh, you know, he may not get too many catches, but he'll have a couple of deep deep bombs, you know, maybe in the 8, eight to 10 touchdown range. I'm curious as to um, to why you, um, you know, because New Orleans last year went to Tim Hightower a lot uh, over Mark Ingram, especially when you got into the red zone. Then this offseason, they trade up to draft Alvin Kamara, and then they sign Adrian Peterson. So now Ingram doesn't have to, you know, fend with, with Hightower anymore, but he does have Adrian Peterson, Alvin Kamara there. Now, Mark Ingram going right now at the 508 in FFPC drafts uh, for his ADP. What is it that you like about Ingram this year to be selecting him in the, you know, mid to late fifth? Well, the Saints have shown that they could have two pass catching backs succeed. And I think that Ingram and Kamara could be the uh, Ingram Spoles type. I could see Peterson taking the uh, some of the first and second down, some goal line work, but I still think Ingram has a potential, especially in the fifth round. Well, okay, what do you think about uh, Adrian Peterson this year? I, I'm sniffing a possible, maybe a yards per carry bet. I don't think so. I think you and I are on the same page. 3.0? <laughs> three, 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 yards, three yards, per yards per carry? Yeah. What's what's the um? What, what is there is there a um? <laughs> Is there like a carries limit or, or like a carries uh, minimum that he's got to hit? Uh, no, that's right. Well, no, no minimum. I mean, 3.0 is quite low. I, I can't, I, it is, and I feel like we're on the same page. I feel page. like I'm giving up too much. I should, it should be well, I, I don't know, understand how I'm the Adrian Peterson guy here because I'm definitely not. <laughs> I, I, might take, I think I was. I might take over 3.0 even though I said that. I think long. I was the Adrian Peterson guy on the show when he was hurt. Yeah. And then when he was crushing it and doing I was like, ah. <laughs> You can have him. He's going to fall apart soon. And then once he <laughs> fell apart, oh, this is the time to get him. AP hey, with 9 for 20 this week. Exactly. That's, that's when I had him on my teams. Ryan, you're a fan of the show. So let's, let, how about we do, uh, let's do a would you rather with, right. uh, with Mark Ingram with you because I'm curious as to see uh, how you would fall on this. Would you uh, rather get a massage okay. from a man or surgery from a female doctor? Would you have sex with Cleveland if it meant you could have sex with Angelina Jolie? Who would you rather do? What would you guys rather be? Who would you rather start a small business with? Who would you rather have sex with? Do you want breakfast or would you rather chew on your own ass as usual? What? Dave, who would you start a small business with if you had your choice? <laughs> Any person. Trump, Cuban. Hillary. Alex Kagan. Oh, another. Well, we're just feeling even the if, love today. Yeah, even if I could do it all over again, <laughs> yeah. it would be Alex Kagan. All right, let's, uh, let's go to uh, Would You Rather here with uh, Ryan Santos and Mark Ingram. Ryan, would you rather draft Mark Ingram? This is redraft. I'm not talking Dynasty now. Mark Ingram okay. or C.J. Anderson? Uh, I'd probably have to go with Ingram. Mark Ingram or Dalvin Cook? 
Mark Ingram or Tevin Coleman? Mark Ingram still. All right, Mark Ingram or the newly minted starting running back for the Green Bay Packers, Ty Montgomery? Probably still Mark Ingram. Uh, like, okay, this is great. He's likely, he loves Ingram. And Mark Ingram. He's very thoughtful. Yeah. yeah. No, I, this is great. This is great radio. Mark Ingram or Spencer Ware? Oh, definitely Ingram. Mark. Right, I got one more. Hold on. Hold Mark on. No, 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 no. I got Ezekiel Elliott. <laughs> <laughs> that's the. That's where I draw the line. All right. So that's <laughs> that's that's, that's, it. that's, it. that's the line. Hey, let, um, let me just ask you one more here. I'm find a good one. Uh, Mark Ingram or Joe Mixon? Uh, there, I'd probably take the upside with Mixon. Okay, there you go. So, that's interesting. Yeah. Mark Ingram, uh, I- interesting guy this year, uh, and uh, uh, well thought out uh, for his role that, that uh, he's going to have in New Orleans So Ryan, Ryan Santos. Let's talk quarterback a little bit. As you are well aware, people are – it's always been trendy to wait on quarterback, but now it's like it hasn't jumped the shark, I guess, is the question, because everyone's waiting on quarterback – are you finding that you're getting some of these premium quarterbacks at a super big discount where you just have to take one of these guys? And if so, who? Yeah, I've actually been – I usually wait for quarterback myself until the uh, 7 through 10 range. I'll usually grab two guys. But this year I see myself grabbing a little bit more of the Rodgers, Luck, Breeze early on. And uh, I think it's because this year, especially more than other years, in the 7 to 10 range there's a lot of uh, receivers and running backs that I like. So I'd rather – Hold the spot for one of those guys. Like so when you say early on, I mean, are you talking like early is really still not early compared to like some local league? No. No. Uh, the earliest I'd probably go is mid-fourth with Rodgers. Mid-fourth. I mean, it's just so amazing. I mean, if you think back to W. Cuff days back yep. in 2000. Sure. Mid, and I actually remember this. There, there was a draft with uh, Joe Dells and Errol Baker, but it was a live right. draft. He took Aaron Rodgers in the fifth round. It was like the early fifth, like 502. Mm-hmm. And he totally, it, I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was when Rodgers was kind of breaking out. I mean, it was maybe after one year. And his team was just terrible. <laughs> Awful. He's like, well, this team is the worst team ever. But because he had Rodgers and he had all these touchdown passes, he actually ended up making the playoffs. And then he won the league, actually. Shut but, up. No, really? Totally, yeah, totally serious. But, but he was like astounding. I mean, it was just unbelievable that Rodgers made it to the fifth round in that draft. Whereas now, this is, you know, it's just no big deal. Yeah. It happens all the time. Yeah. Um, and, again, we can't bring up waiting on quarterback and Joe Del Zanero without him <laughs> saying, I, I always have to wait on a quarterback because I need the extra player. I'm not good enough to draft a quarterback early. So that's what I mean. So yeah. he, was, he was the one to wait for, like, the 12th. And all the things like, all right, yeah. fine. I'll yeah. take the first one in the fifth. Uh, speaking of quarterbacks, Brian, and we're talking to Ryan Santos, a career winner of $25,000 in the FFPC. Uh, speaking of quarterbacks, let's talk uh, team construction. When it comes to you drafting in these 28-round DEs, how many of them do you like to typically draft? And with the teams that you've had a lot of success with uh, in these uh, formats, how many kickers and how many defenses do you usually have on those squads? Uh, for the most part, I usually have three quarterbacks, three kickers, and three defenses. Uh, if I get a quarterback like Aaron Rodgers, then I might be a little more inclined to just keep two. But the uh, kickers are the one that I'll, I'll always at least have three, just because of the uh, big turnover. Even a guy like Aguayo, who I have a, co- a couple of shares of early on, he's already uh, losing his job to Folk. So I like to just get a couple of extra guys at, at kicker. So if you take a quarterback like, let's say, uh, Rodgers, would you consider taking uh, Brent Hutley late? Or, obviously, with Brady and his awesome studly backup, uh, no, I usually won't handcuff, especially in the uh, best balls. Uh, I'd rather just take another another quarterback, like even an Alex Smith as a quarterback three at that point. I'm curious as to um, – let's talk about just – and Dave's going to give me a glare. Let's talk about defenses here just for a minute. I'm curious because a lot of, uh, a lot of people uh, that we've talked to say, no, you only need two defenses. I only prefer two. Now, me, myself – now, hold on. Myself, in DE formats, I like drafting three as well. I like doing three quarterbacks. Mark Moyer three. drafts three, I draft three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the rule. So, so what, what, is it, what, what do you like about having that third defense um, that gives you an advantage over these other teams that are, that are only having two? Points. <laughs> yeah, I don't, uh, I don't particularly look to draft three defenses more than two. It's just that I usually draft them a little bit later. Uh, if I had two defenses who I thought could be top 12 defenses, then I'd be fine rolling with just two especially because there's no injury risk with the defenses. I'd rather take a flyer and an extra wide receiver running back later on. 
So let's talk about a rookie wide receiver, Corey Davis in Tennessee. Drafted insanely early. How good do you think he, you know, the last time a receiver went this really bulky, it was like Julio and A.J. Green, do you think? Is that what it was? I don't, I don't was any, I mean, when did Sammy it, Watkins was, was like the 104 or something like that. I thought he was the 110. And where, where oh, did God, it, was he really that late? I think so. Yeah. And then where did uh, Cooper go? Cooper was up there. Seven? Who the hell knows? Who the hell cares? <laughs> anyway, how good do you think Corey Davis can be in his rookie year? Well, with Marcus Mariota thrown to him. Or is there any other Titans wide receivers you think are a uh, good value now? Uh. I won't really draft Corey Davis. Uh, it seems like he's going towards the middle to the end of the seventh or early eighth. There's just too many other guys there, like uh, Pierre Garçon, that I'd rather have. Uh, I think, you know, especially with uh, the running game that they have, they're going to look to run the ball a little bit more this year. And I don't see Mariota putting up enough yards to really sustain Corey Davis, Rashard Matthews, Delaney Walker, even Taewon Taylor to all be uh, fantasy relevant. Yeah, that will be a tall order, even for a talented quarterback like Marcus Mariota. Uh, Rob is getting me the info on the 2014 NFL Draft, 104. Thanks, Rob. Sammy Watkins. What the hell, where was I thinking? He went. Oh, towards, you know what, who was it? LeBron? Or you, LeBron, LeBron. Yeah, LeBron. Yes, I know we're watching LeBron. <laughs> Ebron. Did Ebron go tenth? Ebron was tenth overall. Oh, yeah. thank goodness, I'm not but, totally insane. No, no, you're not totally insane. Sammy Watkins was the fourth overall. Mike Evans seventh in that draft as well. So he had two top seven receivers, and then of Odell course Beckham Odell Beckham at twelve. Yeah. Uh, you had Brandon Cooks at twenty, uh, Kelvin Benjamin at twenty eight and twenty nine. That's how big he is. Uh, he took up two spots in the draft. So okay, so that is uh, okay. Good knowledge on on Corey Davis there, Dave. What do you make of Corey Davis uh, this year in uh, in Tennessee? Is he well? Let's. I should bring this up for for context here. Uh, what do you make of him uh, and how successful he can be? 903 in drafts right now. You can have Corey Davis, the fourth overall pick in the draft, early in the ninth round of FFPC drafts. Is that a price you can get down with? You know, I normally would don't like to take rookie wide receivers, but I think in the ninth round, why not? I would consider him for sure. Uh, we have much more with Ryan Santos here tonight on the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour. We are going to take another quick break, but when we come back, we're going to talk. We're going to get back to that. 49ers running back discussion uh, and we're actually going to pick the brain of somebody who knows what the hell is going on not Dave not me Ryan Santos won more than 25 Good grand idea. in the FFPC we're going to pick his brain more right after this you're listening to the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour on the Fantasy Sports Radio Network Ryan Santos is our guest tonight on the HSFF Hour I am Eric Balkman he is Dave Gerzak Ryan Santos a $25,000 career winner in the FFPC Ryan one of the more interesting running back situations to follow so far this summer has been the San Francisco 49ers one. A new offense, Kyle Shanahan comes in to install his juggernaut of a, uh, an attack that he used in Atlanta to much success the last few years. He installs it in San Francisco. Carlos Hyde maybe not necessarily the best fit for it. And, of course, we know that the Niners decided to trade up uh, for Joe Williams in the, uh, in the NFL draft this year. He also traded for Capri Bibbs. There's a lot of, uh, of guys bouncing around in that backfield. Flash forward, Ryan, to the end of the 2017 season. Who's the 49ers running back that everyone will have wished they had on their team this season? Uh, I still think it's going to be Carlos Hyde, and especially with his ADP dropping now to the uh, fifth, sixth round. I'd much rather take a flyer on him, uh, and especially if you could handcuff him with Joe Williams later on in the draft, if you could get him in the 15th, 16th round. Seems like a pretty... Uh, Pretty good idea. It could be like a Devonta Freeman, Tevin Coleman type backfield. You already touched on Pierre Garcon earlier. I'm just curious, you know, with the Niners um, undergoing this sort of um, infusion of talent this this past draft, that really rebuilding the franchise. What what fantasy value is uh, in San Francisco this year? Who are the guys? Uh, I don't know if you're targeting anybody specifically. Uh, but who are the guys in San Francisco that you think are are, are definitely guys that, that should be on fantasy rosters? I would say definitely Pierre Garçon. Uh, I think he definitely has the potential for 120-plus targets, over 1,000 yards. Uh, and I've also been taking a couple of late flyers on Jeremy Curley and Marquise Goodwin, uh, 26th to 28th round. Oh, Curley's still in the league. Yeah, still bouncing around. <laughs> you just never get rid of him. So let's see. My next question that has been penned for me. I have yeah. to look at this beauty. What's wrong? What's wrong with it? I don't know. It's a little bit weird. Well, here's the. Let me set this up. So uh, before you ask the question, for for the listeners out there, Ryan knows about this, but for the listeners out there, 
a lot of there's are there are a lot of drafts that go on with the FFPC right after the Super Bowl, you know, up until June when when the Football Guys Players Championship starts. There's a lot of drafts that goes on that go on. However, in those drafts, you will if you participate in a bunch of them, you'll run into several similar players, so, you know, the same players over and over again, and that can be a challenge, right, Dave? Yeah, so strategically speaking, what's it been like so far in your DEs competing against a lot of other talented drafters more than a few times? Uh, a lot of the drafters that I that do uh, many of the leagues with me, some of them, I, every single draft I come away and look at their team, and I mean, it's some of the best competition I probably play against, which definitely helps me later on for my redraft leagues come August. Do you, do you find your – because I think, like, you know, when I commish these, uh, some of these drafts, the, the banter that goes on in the uh, draft chat, some of these guys know who, you know, because they've drafted, you know, four or five times with the same guys, they know who the next pick is going to be. They know who this guy is going to take. Do you find yourself, you know, um, using that to your advantage, knowing which players like certain players to, to maybe grab them around earlier uh, the next time you draft with them? Uh, yeah, it's definitely happened on more than a few a few occasions. That's always interesting when you have to deal with that. You're playing the man, not just the draft, Dave. <laughs> uh, let's uh, get like rounders. Yeah, just like rounders. Let's uh, get to a couple of emails here for Ryan. Uh, first one is from Steve in Huntsville, Alabama. He writes, "Hey Ryan, how many shares of Jordan Howard do you have this season so far? I know his offensive line isn't great." And he plays on a bad team, but neither of those things seem to slow him down last season. Good luck this year. That is Steve in Huntsville, Alabama. Steve, thank you so much for the email. Uh, Ryan, Jordan Howard, do you, have you been selecting him a lot? He has an ADP right now in, in the FFPC of uh, 204. Have you been uh, grabbing him in a lot of these DEs? Uh, I have a couple of shares of him. Uh, there's some other guys that I'd rather have, like the uh, Melvin Gordon or Devonta Freeman. Uh, usually if I get somebody to like Jordy Nelson at the end of the first, you know, I'll take a flyer on Jordan Howard, but he's not really somebody I'm targeting. Would you rather have, like, I'm just looking at the three running backs going after him, DeMarco Murray, Jay Ajayi, Todd Gurley, would you rather have any of those guys over him? Uh, it would probably be between him and uh, DeMarco Murray would probably be my top two. What, I mean – I'm just curious, and Dave, feel feel free to chime in on this because we haven't talked a whole lot about Jordan Howard so far this season. I'm always um, hesitant to select a player like Howard, who was sort of an aggregator last year. He just he got the ball a ton. He put up good numbers. Um, non pedigree back. Non pedigree back. Coming off a great rookie season, where sometimes you get the sophomore slump. Right, and uh, the the team is marginally improved. It's led by Beaker from the Muppet <laughs> yes, show. Yeah, you have, a, you have a Muppet leading the offense, which I think is, is interesting. So, Ryan, I mean, like, he basically had all those things against him last year. He still put up crazy numbers. Is there a, a, a good, tangible reason that we can come up with that would say, hey, he's not going to do it again, other than he's just probably not going to be able to do that two years in a row? Uh, no, I was just at the current ADP in the early, early second, I'd be a little more comfortable with him mid to late second. There's just a couple other guys that I'd rather have in that area. I'd probably rather go over, go for one of the uh, top receivers. Not worth the risk for you either, Dizzle? Uh, probably not. Not, probably not. Probably not. Uh, let's go to, uh, this is Terry in Blue Mound, Texas. He says, what's up, Ryan? It could be a she, you know. Uh, I guess it could. <laughs> T-E-R-R-Y. Yeah. All right, okay. I had a friend in grade school named Terry. And it was spelled that way? Yeah, and it was a guy. And it was a guy? Yeah, it was a guy. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Thank you. Always a pleasure when you interject. He's with... a great friend. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he was. Maybe this is him. Did he move to Blue Mountain, Texas? Nope. Still lives in Milwaukee. He owns part of a pizza joint and uh, smokes a lot of pot. All right, well, you know what they say about guys named Terry. Uh, what's up, Ryan? I keep hearing ASJ's name as a guy who is making a lot of plays at OTAs. I know he went to alcohol rehab and lost 20 pounds. Is he a guy you'd be looking at as a backup or a number three tight end? Thank you for the email, Terry in Blue Mound, Texas. Uh, Austin Safarian Jenkins, Dave, 2508 right now in the FFPC. So he's another guy you can get super late. In the late. tight end premium. Yeah, in the tight end premium format. Yeah. What about you, Ryan? Is, is this a guy that you've been, you know, you read this positive stuff, have you been targeting him later on as a third tight end or maybe a fourth tight end even that late? Yeah, I would definitely take him in the uh, back end of the draft. Uh, he definitely has a lot of upside. I remember coming in, he was, uh, he was touted to be one of the better uh, tight end prospects. And they don't really have too many receiving threats in, 
New York. So I could definitely see him having a role. In, okay, a lot of the rookie drafts are over right now, Bob. Yeah. And then this news drafts. Yeah. So this is this is one of the guys, in my opinion, that's not rostered. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe in some of the FFPC ones, but in Oof, what, I don't know, man. Maybe that, not. But yeah, but you're right. Yeah, so then, like, I I think he'll be one of the. Is he rostered? Do you think in a, in a lot of your leagues? Uh, I've seen him rostered in I think two of my five. Dynasty. All right. Yeah. So these are the he's, yeah ASJ is gonna be a guy that he's gonna be a high up on the waiver waiver run in late August. I recently I, I think I think ESPN.com had it um, ranking of the pass catchers uh, each team in the NFL and and the I think it was ESPN oh. Jets are 32. So the opportunity is there. No, yeah, well they might. Um, so the, the opportunity is there uh, for ASJ to uh, to make an impact and and um, you know we'll see what happens. Again he's. I, I, I've been banging this drum all show long. You can get great value right now in, uh, in FFPC DE, so you should definitely be taking advantage of that with as many saps as possible. All right, Ryan, this is our toughest question. Actually, it's not at all. Give us a player you view as an early-round bust this year that you won't draft on any of your teams, redraft only, and then a sleeper that you've been acquiring later on drafts in this season. It can't be anyone you've mentioned already, so you got to get fresh. Uh, I'd have to say probably Fournette towards the end of the second round. Uh, I think everybody just has that rookie fever from Zeke Elliott last year. And he's a great talent, but I just can't see him having that great of a rookie season on the uh, on the Jaguars. Uh, and as far as the late round flyer, uh, I've been taking a lot of Jonathan Williams in the 17th, 18th round. Uh, he's somebody now with uh, Gillis League on. He could take over that role that Gillespie had last year. And if anything happens to LaShawn McCoy, he could be uh, running back one. McCoy's getting up there in age, Bulky. Well, not in the, I mean, I wouldn't say he's necessarily getting up there in age, but we, we talked about this last week. He's getting up there in usage. I mean, and Rex Ryan really pounded him pretty hard. Uh, so I, I think that the opportunity is there for Get your mind out of the gutter. No, I'm not saying anything. He started as a very young running back. So. Yeah. Do we, do we know how old he is right now? He's 28. 28. He turns 29 in, uh, in mid-July. So maybe this is the time to get rid of him in Dynasty, huh? That was about two years ago. So maybe uh, this No is... one's paying full price for Shady. Well, yeah, I'm not saying you can get full price for him, but you can get something for him. Just do that, 30% off. Ryan, if, if you had the opportunity uh, right now, would you give up a first-rounder for LaShawn McCoy? Uh, if my team is uh, in win-now mode, I'd, if my team is in win-now mode, I would. Okay, interesting. I tried, actually, I tried to trade away Shady McCoy to uh, Danny Mueller yeah. for the 106 rookie pick. And he thought about it for a while and then emailed back. And he's like, oh, that's really close. I'm going to pass. Who did he end up taking at 106? Do you uh, know? I have no idea. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, Ryan, listen, this has been a pleasure having you on. I'm so glad uh, that we, we actually got you on the show, especially with all the success that you've had. Uh, loved hearing your player opinions, not your uh, analysis on, on how you like to construct and, and build these uh, DE teams. I wish you uh, nothing but the best of luck going forward, and uh, hopefully 2017 is even a better year for you than 2016 was. We'll all follow you on Twitter at FFLinks. We certainly appreciate um, uh, all the uh, knowledge that you put out there as well. Great stuff, and thanks for coming on tonight, man. I appreciate you guys having me. Ryan Santos, ladies and gentlemen, Giants fan from New York at FFLinks on Twitter. How do you know Twitter is an FFLinks? I don't know. I just how it's capitalized. <laughs> that's, just, that's, how I, that's how I read it, FFLinks. I'm just uh, great stuff having him on. Yeah, and I say this all the time. If you're not following him on Twitter, you are doing it wrong as far as uh, wanting to win uh, high stakes fantasy football. So or Twitter. Great stuff. Or if you want to win Twitter. Yeah. The, the other great competition out there. We have much more great competition coming up later on in the show. We're going to take our final break. When we come back. We have a ton of emails to get to. We're going to play a blind resume. We're going to put Dave Gerzak on the spot. What? And yep. And uh, we'll see how the dizzle comes through. Here's a spoiler alert. He won't. <laughs> Eric Whatever. Balkman, Eric, well, maybe you will. I don't know. I'm ready now. Eric Balkman and Dave Gerzak, High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour, coming at you right after this on the Fantasy Sports Radio Network. Welcome back to the HSFF Hour. My name is Eric Balkman. He is Dave Gerzak. Great interview there from Ryan Santos at FF Links on Twitter. Uh, $25,000 winner in his FFPC career, and that's what we do on this show. We Give advice, and we turn you into $25,000 winners. Yeah, We're gonna, we, we have nothing to do with that. We had something to do with it. We had 110% to do with it, according to Ryan. And uh, we're about to make a thousand airs out of all of y'all right now. Sweet, 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 sweet. If you've got a 
question for Eric, Dave, or tonight's guest, send them a tweet at HSFF Hour on Twitter. Email the show at HighStakeFantasyFootball at gmail.com. Post it in the chat room during the broadcast. Hashtag your tweet with HSFF or just smack Eric in the head. That's HighStakeFantasyFootball at gmail.com or at HSFF Hour on Twitter. You know, we don't really talk about this a whole lot, but, you know, all these guests we have on the show have been drafting for months. And, and you and I, you know, we're busy with stuff. We really haven't. What, I mean, what, when is your first redraft? Is it the Scott Fishbowl? Uh, when does that start? August? Uh, July something, I think. Yeah, Scott Fishbowl. Which, yeah. Thanks, Scott Fish. SB, hashtag SB7. Uh, SFB7 this year, yeah. Right. That. Did you see what um, the divisions and draft order came out? Yeah, I have two picks. For the second year in a row, I have the number one pick. I have to question how random yeah. this is with uh, with all these picks. I bet you somebody else has a 12 pick again. You know, that's the thing. It's one in 12 every time. Yep, that's true. Uh, so that'll be exciting. That I think that is my first redraft as well. Um, I, you know, I did the Kentucky Dynasties, and I had the um, – you know, The only redraft I do have in this is KFS. Really? That's it? Yeah. No other private ones? No, just that's private, it, it, private it, dynasties. Private dynasties. That's bizarre that, that nobody wants to get together for a private redraft. Isn't that kind of weird? Yeah, for with our local constituency. No, you know, not yeah. just like or just even like the high stakes guys. Yeah, we used to do a high stakes auction out there, but it just got too busy. So yeah, whatever. Yeah. Who? No one cares. Hey, which by the way, I have news on a potential uh, event that's going on with uh, at Planet Hollywood with the FFPC that you are not aware of yet. It's gonna <laughs> that's be, great. It's going to be very exciting. So happy now. Yeah, I mean it's. Uh, Is this a surprise? It'll be very cool. Uh, the prognosticator and I are, are aware of it, and. Um, uh, myself and um, Peter Overzet from uh, Fan- the Fantasyland podcast. Yes, uh, we're we're planning something, so it'll be very cool. Okay. If it comes together, I shouldn't have said it. Now you're expect everybody's expecting it. It may not happen. I've lost the expectation, but it probably will. Let's get to the emails, Dave. Uh, first email tonight, Charlie in Florence, Kentucky. When we look back at the 2017 season, will we be talking about CJ Procise being a league winner? As long as he stays healthy, he should clearly be the pass catching back and should bulky ear muff it. Easily beat out Lacey as the more productive back in the offense. Should I be targeting ProSize in all my leagues? That is Charlie in Florence, Kentucky. So CJ ProSize, Dave, I suppose I should tell you where he's going in drafts. You want to take a guess? Uh, 10.09. Ooh, good guess. 10.06 for the FFPC <laughs> ADP right now. Yeah, so you can get CJ ProSize in the 10th round. How do you see the Seattle backfield shaking out this season? You know, I actually, I see Lacey doing pretty well. I don't think he's. I don't think he's gonna get hurt. First and back, second down back. Procise might, might get third downs, but that doesn't. You know, Russell Wilson's a pretty efficient quarterback. Yeah. He's totally healthy right now. One of the easiest schedules in the NFL as well. They may not get a lot of third downs. They might just score a lot of touchdowns. Yeah. What makes you? And I'm, I feel weird. Me, Eric Balkman, asking you, Dave Gerzak, this question. Yes, the huge Lacey love. Why do you like Eddie Lacey? <laughs> And why why do you feel like he this this year he won't get hurt? Why do, why do you feel like he, he maybe will stay keep the injury bug away from him? You know, here's the thing: you can get Lacey and Pro Size is pretty. That's pretty cheap. Tenth round. Why yeah, Eddie Lacey six ten right now. Yeah, dude, that's a great for a running based offense. Granted, they're going to throw a little bit more than every year they do with Wilson. And now he's healthy. Six ten and ten oh nine. Sign me up for that. I'll take the the Seahawks running game. I know their offensive line has struggled in the past, but. It's a great organization. They great did improve coaches. it. It's not like they didn't yeah, improve it. They're going to get better. That's not. They won't, it won't be. It's not a long-term problem for an organization like that. If you're the Rams or the Jets, you always have to worry about. Or the Jaguars. It's always a concern because you suck at most things. Like you're drafting running backs and receivers in the first and second rounds. Right. Yeah. Just not not intelligent. Hey, Eddie Lacy, second round pick. <laughs> for what it's worth, of course Seattle didn't draft him. Um, Thomas point. Rawls, an afterthought for you. Uh yeah, he is, I guess, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I, I would be staying away. Not even in a DE. I, like, if I went with the ProSize Lacey stack, I'd just be like, whatever. I'm yeah, not. You know, Ryan the, Sa- I'm sorry to interrupt. Ryan sorry. Santos brought that up, too. Mm-hmm. It's kind of important when you're talking about these 12-team um, DEs. Handcuffing may be a little bit overrated, especially when you're just, like, drafting so early. Just draft for upside. You know, draft guys like that can create points for you and, and maximize your, your increased volatility from week to week. Go ahead. You know, just about handcuffing in general, I don't generally handcuff unless it's, you know, convenient for me. If it's like, for me, if I was going to take, if I took Lacey, let's say, in the sixth round, I'd maybe look at ProSize if I couldn't find anybody else in the 10th or the 11th. I would definitely not reach for the ninth. Two, two portions go into the handcuff formula for me. Um, it's got to be obvious. It's got to be a clear yeah, guy. A talented person. And it's got to be cheap. You yeah. know, you, I, I, can't, I can't 
like um, we talked about, who was it? Arian Foster and Ben Tate a few years yeah. back. That was obvious, but it wasn't cheap, you know. Jamal and, Lewis, three songs. It, it, well, yeah, that's another. One. And then you had um, Jamal Charles. You, you had Spencer Ware, Charkandrick West. It was muddled. And then you know you take yeah, Charles and you got screwed. So <laughs> that's how it, that's how it worked out that yeah, year. Yeah. Uh, moving on, Nick in Hawthorne, California. Hey, Dave and Balky. Uh, perhaps this is just another reason to downgrade Gurley, but I read this week that the Rams want to decrease his targets and give them to Dunbar. Would you be more likely to take Gurley at a discount since this will probably ding his ADP? Great show. That is Nick in Hawthorne, California. Dave, when it rains, it pours for Gurley. He's going to be catching fewer passes this year, and he's pretty dependent upon him for his uh, output last year. Um, I actually looked this up before the show. In 2015, he had 26 targets. That was two years ago. Last year, 58 targets. So he went up by more than doubled his targets, and now they want to take those away from him. Where's he going right now? Uh, his ADP is the 210. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, uh, hold on. Let me, let me give you some context here. No, I mean, you, 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 you want to do you, what? You don't even have to. I mean, okay, all right. No, it makes sense. I mean, it's not a team that scores a lot of touchdowns. Right. The quarterback sucks. He's sucking your guy who did nothing as a rookie. Who may not be the starter, by the way, yeah, this year. Be... Did you read what, what Sean McVay no, said about no. Jared Goff? Uh, they, <laughs> they said that, uh, he said that, oh, he's coming along. You know, he's grasping the offense. That's bad. That's and, also bad. And then he said, uh, but we're going to play the best player that gives us the best chance to win. That's terrible. Yeah. So I'm like, this guy, and remember, McVay did not draft Goff. He might not even be the starter week one. Yes, it's absolutely possible. So, so maybe the just, Rams is just, in general, you avoid their offense, right? Yeah, I mean, and Dunbar is a good pass catching back. And then when they come out, again, when they come out and say it, I mean, you know, they're but, writing it okay. on the chalkboard for you. Sometimes they're not correct. Sometimes it's coach speak. Sometimes it's not true. And I know if Gurley's going to fall a little bit, fine, third round. But still, how many touchdowns is he going to score? I mean, 58 targets, even that's not very impressive. Where's Christian McCaffrey going right now? Uh, yeah, I can look that up. And then uh, He uh, actually catches passes. Right. He's going to get a ton of targets. Christian McCaffrey is – I have a I, – don't let me forget I have a McCaffrey – or a um, Gurley story. God damn it. Just hang on. <laughs> anyway. Hold on. Hold on. I'll, I'm I'll sure he's it. going much later. I think he's going like the early fourth, probably something like that. This computer is just, just the worst, Dave. It's just the worst. <laughs> Control F. Do you ever? Do yeah, you ever I'm do doing that? it right now. Just <laughs> three ten, three ten this for is, McCaffrey. Speaking of great radio, so yeah, three ten. I mean, I'd rather, I'd rather that. have McCaffrey around later um, and draft some receiver. So uh, Alshon Jeffrey or whatever. Can't reveal any names as much as this is going to make me sound like Cecil Lammy, but I was talking with a former uh, nice guest of the show. Um, he's also on the high stakes lowdown. He was actually drafting a satellite with the FFPC the other night that I happened to be commissioning. And he called me. Oh, you guys and, were like colluding and stuff? No, we weren't colluding. You're telling who's in other people's queue? No, no, no. I would never do that. <laughs> um, so, any, nor would I don't he. I know if we can see that. Uh, yeah, and he would, uh, this guy would, he's a great he guy. He, didn't, he, he wouldn't even ask. <laughs> so, so we were talking. He's like, oh, Balky, I'm just slaying this draft. And, <laughs> really? and yeah, and then uh, he, I said, well, except for that girly pick there. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, I know. And, <laughs> and, funny. and, and I'm like, uh, he's just like, you know, it, this is like mid to late 30s. Like he's out there. He had started with two receivers. Yeah. He's like, you know, to see what happens. It, they, for what you can't get away from pedigree. It's very tough to get away from It's tough pedigree. to get. And wouldn't you rather have like to, I do. to die with the talented guys on your team? Exactly. I remember the Rams actually went out and signed um, Andrew Whitworth, and they added another pretty fairly prominent free agent offensive lineman as well. So they have made the upgrades there. You know, I, 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 okay, so to defend think, Gurley a little bit. Oh, hold on. Yeah. Before you defend Gurley, um, Gerald Everett and Tyler Higby, they want to run more two tight end sets. Both those guys in block too. So maybe sure. there'll be more blockers out there. Go ahead. So what? Okay, what type of coaching staff has this uber pedigreed fast running back that they're going to put on the bench for Lance frigging journeyman Dunbar? I mean, who cares about Lance Dunbar? Unless it's just terrible. Unless it's wanting to have a big picture, knowing that they're not going to compete this year, they want to not have Gurley take the pounding. Of, that's not a pound. Passes caught is but, not a but, pound. Okay, that, but that's fine. But you're still out there. That means he's out. They're not going to put Lance Dunbar out there in first and second down. So that means if you're going to keep Gurley out there on the passing down, he's going to be playing, pardon my French, an S load of, of snaps uh, this year. So maybe that's what it is. Maybe not. Maybe pound's not the right word. But reduce the wear and tear. Have him on the field less. I mean, keep him fresher later into the season. Later into his career, Dave. Yeah. That, no. That actually, no. That's a rational reason for doing it. I, just, I don't give them that much credit. Okay. 
Uh, dear uh, Kellen and Kellen the second, do you guys think Hunter Henry's projected emergence has driven up his price too much this season? Would Gates actually represent the bargain as your backup tight end in FFPC? That's John in Miami, Florida. Uh, thank you for the email, John. Hunter Henry, 609. Antonio Gates, 1312. To wow. me, wow. if I... There's one person who you're paying too much for. Hunter Henry. Gates. Oh, really? Yeah. Gates at the 1312, you think it's too much? Nothing to do with Gates. Really? No, they're putting him out to pasture. He's a nice person. That's the only reason he's still on the team. Here's your $8 million or whatever you're getting paid. The other uh, aspect to bring up is the fact that um, Keenan Allen comes back from ACL, the ACL tear. Uh, They drafted Mike Williams. (laughs) Whatever. You're the one, by the way, you're the one who offered that trade. Um, That's like, I got to keep Balky happy and make his dynasty team competent so when, to, we, when we talk to, about it on the show he's not a, being embarrassed i'm trying to do a playoff win thank you you need to try harder <laughs> so keenan allen comes back mike williams uh they drafted obviously tyrell williams travis benjamin so they're in hunter henry expected to take another step forward maybe that does make sense now that i'm thinking about it out loud that antonio gates is really going to struggle to get the targets that he has been associated with over the last four or five years in um san diego not going to get him in los angeles did he get? Did he get that touchdown record that he was searching for? He tied it. So I mean, no, if he, all to, he's he got, to, he wants to just beat that. He's going to, he's going to retire. A, <laughs> I brought this up on the show. Yeah. Matthew Berry, who was out at the, um, uh, was at the draft combine, and he he has a lot of contacts out there, and he was talking to uh, people sure with he does. people within the San Diego organization or the Los Angeles organization. Insiders, now, probably. Saying that they went out of their way to try to get Gates the record last year. Well, now that he's tied it, they're just like, okay, if it happens, I mean, it'll happen. And what we don't need to game plan for you it. Know, Farrell knows Antonio Gates. He says he's a very yeah. nice person. Yeah. So he's in there. You know, it's just like ballers. He's in there talking to the yeah. GM. Yeah. Hey, you know, I, I'll play another year if you pay me the $8 million or Yeah, million. exactly. He's just a nice guy. They want to pay him. Um, so Hunter Henry. The 609. I feel like that might be a little bit too steep. I don't think so. I'll I don't think him. so. I would actually... Second year breakout, I'll take Henry at the 6-0-9. Baby, did, didn't, didn't he kind of already break out last year? Like a real breakout. That's uh, a mini breakout. All right, okay. <laughs> I'm just looking to see how many tight ends are going off the board. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Am I looking at this right? He's the 11th tight end off the board. Uh, I, was, I, was I guess I, I can get behind that. I didn't realize... Yeah, here's, here's the tight ends going off the board before Hunter Henry right now. Gronk, Kelsey, Reed, Olsen, obviously, right? Nope. Jimmy Graham, Eifert, Delaney Walker, Kyle Rudolph, Zach Ertz, Martellus Bennett, of course, great pick, and then Hunter Henry. Zach Ertz, I think, my, yeah, that's the guy that's overvalued there. Zach Ertz. Dude, I mean, Eifert. at the 508, you're going to take Ertz, who is going to be contending for targets with Jordan Matthews, Alshon Jeffrey, and the other guy. Torrey Smith. Uh, is that the other guy that they signed? Torrey yeah. Smith? Who knows? Yeah. Some sucky guy who runs really fast and doesn't catch any passes. Yeah. And LeGarrette Blunt. Think about all the passes that he's going to take away from, <laughs> uh, from Zach Ertz this year. So. And Stroll. Don't forget. Oh, yeah, of course. And Donnell Pumphrey. Who apparently he's been on the, Smith, he's been on the, uh, th- those guys have been on the same field together. Uh, Pumphrey and Sproles oh, in right. OTAs. Yeah. Oh. Just. Apparently, it's a track meet when the when the Eagles are playing somebody this year. By the way, okay, quick bit of news on Antonio Gates. First of all, I think his agent is hungover right now because he got so drunk last night. Because yeah. <laughs> Antonio Gates' salary, his cap number is five point four three seven five million this year. Yeah. And his dead cap money was five million bucks before June first. If he was cut before June first, ball. He, oh yeah. They would have saved five million. But he made the team. Wow. But he's gonna get. He's gonna get all that money. Well, five he, million. He they could have saved for a backup tight yeah. end. So I mean, they're probably not gonna cut him because now there's no cap savings whatsoever. Right. So his agent is hungover right now. They're celebrating out there. Good job, Antonio Gates. Still getting paid. What do you think about Philip Rivers with all these weapons this year? I don't mind. Yeah, yeah I no, like Golly, him. he's good quarterback. Gee, golly, gosh, Dave. It is blind resume time. This is from Glenn in Warren, Pennsylvania. Right. I uh, have not checked these stats like a good host and like a horrible producer that Rob is. <laughs> uh, he did not either, so these may or may not be accurate. All right. Last year I finished with 69 catches for 967 yards and five touchdowns and finished as the 27th best receiver. This past offseason, my team made almost zero changes in the wide receiver core. And I will... Okay. What was that? No, I'm just... I'm just All, he's, uh, quote, the quote is almost zero changes. Okay. Okay. And I will have the same quarterback I had last season. Currently, 
My FFPC ADP is 1102, and I am the 44th wide receiver drafted on average. Who am I? Adam Field. How did you know that? Yeah. First guess. Woo! That's crazy, man. Thank you. Nice Thank you. job. How did, so what gave it away? I was thinking of guys that you know aren't obvious. I was thinking Cameron Meredith, but they've had all these wide receivers. Right, changes. yep. And Thielen is a guy that has a few number of those awesome weeks. Going in the 11th round, finished as a, again, a, a, almost a wide receiver two last yeah. year, almost a top 25 guy. And going 44. No respect. No, it's like Brady Danfield. They say, they say Treadwell yeah. is lighting it up. Yeah. Uh, you know he's lighting it up, Falky. Yeah, he also. He, he has some injury, right? He, he never got over? Yeah, that he played hurt uh, right. all all season last year. Which well, now, really, uh, to now, be fair to him, he only had one catch, so he really didn't play. Right. That okay. Hurt. But now they said that he was still recovering from that leg injury at the combine. Right. Um, and he pushed himself because he really wanted to do it. And remember, we talked about how bad, how slow he was at the combine. He outslowed them. He did out. Well, he didn't outslow them. <laughs> he he was outslowed by everybody else. He was so slow. So you look at Treadwell, all these bad things. And then, again, you got to kind of sort what's real and what's just a puff, you know, you know, trying to make excuses for their first round pick. Yeah. Um, but you look at if all that is true, then there is breakout potential this year. I just worry about, and again, I'm talking out of both sides of my mouth saying I think that Minnesota's offensive line isn't great and they're going to be in a lot of situations where they're going to have to pass. Mm-hmm. Um, but Treadwell is clearly behind Diggs, probably behind Thielen as well. I don't know how much of a window he has to break out of. You know what I mean? Treadwell? It, it, yeah, we talking yeah, about Treadwell, yeah, Treadwell. Yeah, Thielen, I mean, basically already broke out. Uh, you know, it, it's really interesting. It, it depends a little bit on what narrative you're buying into. Yeah. I mean, if you buy into the narrative that the coaches are trying to tell you, you know, Treadwell becomes interesting because he's a pedigree player that if you make the argument that he's been it was injured all that time and that maybe he is a four or five player – at the size and speed, you know, the size of yeah. 6'3", 221 or whatever. That's a pretty interesting guy. And so now you're getting him for super cheap. Maybe you get a, a future second for for. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. what are you paying for him in Dynasty? He's cheap. Yeah, he is cheap. But I, he, very, he very well, I mean, one catch. I mean, that's so pathetic. I mean, the road of his, you know, a sucky meter would be going crazy. Be like, never draft this guy. There's yeah. never been a success story. He's like Ryan Lee from wide receivers. Yeah. So there's the, Oof, uh, that's a, there's the counter. That's argument. chilling. That is bone chilling. <laughs> Uh, Ryan Leaf for receivers. You um you look at Treadwell. He was wasn't he like picked in the twenties? I feel like by Minnesota. Yeah, there was like a lot 20. of teams that passed over him too. It's amazing you gave, you got me to talk about Treadwell again. Yeah, well, is it, it wouldn't it be funny, blind squirrel it, finding. Wouldn't it not? be funny though if now I actually after our big argument last week I now I was starting to like Treadwell. Again. Did you see? And then you have to date it. You'll say all right, Dave on this date right. said that he likes Treadwell possibly as a, with all the qualifiers. Yeah. Did you see that? Uh, some of the tweets that we got for the Treadwell argument. Yeah, I felt bad because one guy said he, you know, thought it was unprofessional, Is which it, it very much was. Totally was. Yeah, and, mostly on my and, and, well, it was all on my and, and like Rob, I think Rob replied to him, uh, we are unprofessional because we are not professional podcasts. So, <laughs> like, true. if you're coming to listen to a professional podcast, keep looking. Yes, you There's can. only a zillion of them out there. <laughs> yeah. you, you will not. But then uh, some I guy. Rec- I recommend the four-hour work week guy, Jim Ferris. Yeah. You know, James Altucher, he has a good show. Yep. They have like uh, millions of listeners. Some other uh, have, like Elon Musk once in a while. Right. Some other listener replied to that guy and said, Ha, that was the best part of the podcast. <laughs> like just really enjoyed yeah, it. We were it was quite genuine. So I mean it was, it was, was not reversed. It was a polarizing argument that we had with Tre- which wasn't really I don't want to get into it again. It wasn't really an argument. I feel like we were kind of saying yeah, the it, same it didn't thing. result in fisticuffs afterwards. Like not this one. A couple of you know British guys with their Fist raised and in the unfortunate uppercut stance with both arms. How do you defend that in Brazilian jiu-jitsu? <laughs> uh, do you, they teach that? You would just you just run up to him and just grab push him. him. Yeah, you put him, you'd put him in a clinch. You'd have both of his arms like crushed up against him. <laughs> and then you would do like a single leg takedown and get yeah. him on the ground and then just probably break one arm or choke him. Uh, all uh, possible outcomes. Cal in Columbus, Georgia. Last year, Kroll had fewer than 200 carries and still nearly topped 1,000 yards. Do you think he's a buy this season with all the upgrades Cleveland made to their line? Thank you for the email, Cal, in Columbus, Georgia. We talked about Isaiah Crowell on the show. Actually, I don't think we did. We talked about this in real life of how Crowell had – I'm going to butcher the stat now. but um, Some percentage of his carry. Yeah, like 48% of his yardage came yeah. on 16 oh – God, I, I don't even want to say it because like I'm going to screw it up. Like 13 or 15 carries or something. Yes. Yeah. Like, 
a bunch of good big players in in the teens. Like, and if you take obviously, if you take away running backs' best plays, his average is going right. to hurt. But this was really it was bad. something else. Yeah. Uh, interestingly enough, I actually do feel like Crawl might be a buy after I've traded him stupidly in a dynasty league. I owned him. Yeah. I dealt him away. Yeah. I don't. I, I probably should. I did this for Joe Williams. Yeah. During the Joe it, Williams, it's like, still might it still might work out. It might work, but yeah. it's probably a stupid trade. I don't think it's. I, really, a, I, 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 mean, I no, I don't even think it's a stupid trade. Was I know it's not a stupid it's trade. Caring yeah. because I I know that because that player, the person who drafted Joe Williams, uh, Fred. Draft him in the mid. Former co-host of this show, yeah. yeah. Great Fred Allen. Yeah. Draft him in the mid-second round. So obviously he he paid up for him. Right. And I was getting desperate because I hadn't gotten enough Joe Williams shares in my eight dynasty leagues. Yeah. I really wanted to get one. So. Yeah. Um, you want to take a guess where Crowell is going in leagues right now? In redraft. Yes. Obviously. Um. No one dynasty. One on one. That is pretty. You know, I think he should be going like in the fifth, but I think he's going like let's say the seventh. You are way wrong on this one. Really? 407. Dude. Wow. Yeah. All right. So, so, they're, so, so they're, now after you said he was a buy, you clearly thought he was going later. You probably would not be taking him in the mid-fourth. 407 is pretty pricey for yeah. redraft. I mean, I, I think in Dynasty, he's still not being valued highly in Dynasty. Don't forget about Duke Johnson. Just I'm just saying. No, he's still right. there. He's it's still going to catch true. passes. Absolutely true. Hugh Jackson did say that he did not run the ball as much as he wanted last year, which I think every losing coach says. Yeah, we were behind all the time. Yeah. It's amazing. So he definitely wants to do it. They they brought in they, um, want to, but they, still they brought in the guy from the Packers, uh J C Treader. They bring him in. They bring in uh the other the guy who is much better than that. I can't think of who it was. <laughs> uh but he's no, also, to be Packer line he's no, 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 not Packers. Um no. the Browns brought in another guy who's actually better than Treader. Um right, but Treader's a pretty good line lineman as well. So they made some upgrades there. Kroll is a guy that you would look at, but I'm with you, man. I, uh, I'll just I'll tell you this right now, uh, as long as I have it up. Guys, uh, running backs that are going after uh, Kroll right now, Joe Mixon. I'd rather have Mixon than Kroll. Uh, I guess I'd rather have Kroll than Hyde. Uh, I'd rather have Ty Montgomery, and then it gets to Tevin Coleman. That's a little dicey. But, you know, Coleman's going a full round later, so I wouldn't have to make that decision. It's, it's really interesting. I wonder, I really, I'd, uh, I'll have to give it a little more thought. Actually, Crowell's an interesting player. Yeah, he is definitely interesting. Let's get to our final email tonight. This is Pete in Botano, North Dakota. Hi, Eric and Dave. I didn't think I'd ever see it again, but Julius Thomas is getting some preseason hype by beat writers and his offensive coordinator saying they're designing plays for him. Jeez. Here we go again. He's not that expensive right now in the FFPC leagues I've been in. Would you guys draft Thomas as your tight end one if you waited on the position? Ugh. Any guesses to where Julius Thomas is going in drafts right now, Dave? Uh, tight ten, end premium leagues? Tenth round? Nine, ten. So the end of the ninth round is where he's going He's not being drafted as a starter. Three picks off. That was a ton of <laughs> he's, not, he's not being drafted as a starter. Uh, so, I mean, there's a, there is a – if I waited on tight end in the FFPC and I still needed one, my starter at the end of the ninth, I'd probably still start strategizing for my next draft because I don't think it's going to work out. Yeah, right. But Julius Thomas is a guy that, yeah, I would Take have – your ghetto tight end strategy. I would, I would never – this is like uber three, ghetto. Three ghetto tight ends. This is like pro- projects ghetto <laughs> strategy. Cabrini green level of tight ends. Well, you three so would, would three. he, hold on, would he be your first tight end if you're going the ghetto route? Yeah, so okay, maybe he, uh, hopefully he would not be, but let's say he was. Ten, ten, so I take so you, you could get him and All then right, you get. Give me Julius Thomas. All right, give me some other guys. Then you get Dennis Pitta right away in the next round. Yeah, I would, you know, if, again, if it was so bad. But I know they were saying they weren't going to use Pitt as much. But, okay, so that's another You get Cam and Brayton, and David and Joku in the 11th right now. All right. Yeah, probably pass. Uh, there's a bevy of them going in the 12th. Great. C.J. Fedorowicz, Austin Hooper, Jared Cook, Evan Engram, Charles Clay. Woof, 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 woof. Okay, so I'll take Fedorowicz. Really? Sure. Okay. He's the starting tight end on that offense, and they got a you know, quarterback. Play yeah. Really sucks, so they're going to throw it to him. Okay. Tom Savage, who's going to throw it to Hopkins all the time. He's throw yeah, to actually, that is what I do think. Thorowitz is actually a pretty athletic player. What's wrong, with, then, what's wrong with Hooper or Cook? Hooper is another breakout possibility. I would look at Hooper because he's a second-year guy. Why yeah. not? Cook, eh. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't like, I don't like Cook. Who's the, who's the tight end that's going like the 20-something round we were talking about earlier tonight? Austin Safarian Jenkins. Yeah, ASJ. Throw ASJ in there as my fourth tight end if I'm going to the Steve. That is, listen. All right, there it, you go. It, it, well, I'll give you it, a bonus tight okay. end. That's a ghetto tight end. It could work. All right. I've seen this. I've seen um, this work one time. And that's, again, Don Matter. We always bring it up when he had started. That didn't to, work, actually. 
his tight ends did suck, and he still won. It's just, a, okay, it, it okay, okay. But, but he took the strategy where he didn't invest any, any right. which is the same strategy here. But no, the point of the strategy is to invest in three either oldish, like an, like an oldish. <laughs> so he might end, as well just not even draft or a, tight a end. young tight end, or like he's up, looking for values. Yeah, looking yeah. for values late, and then okay. all you want is one of them to pay out. Right. So, I, we, I did this with Vernon Davis in NFFC in 2008, yeah. and it worked out great. I had three crappy tight ends. Vernon Davis was supposed to be crappy. He ended up being great. Boom. Yeah. He okay. worked out really well. That's a non-tight end premium league, though. I, I just Fine, fine, fine. Maybe it's just I don't have the chutzpah to do it, Dave. I just It's, it's beyond me. <laughs> Whatever. Doing, continuing to, to elongate this uh, show would be beyond me as well. So let's uh, wrap things up here tonight. I want to thank Ryan Santos. Dave Gerzak, the FFPC, Rob Bryce, uh, and of course all of you who are tuning in on a special Thursday night. If you listen live, a happy birthday to former Football Guys Players Championship overall winner, Joe Pigo. It's his birthday today. And Team Shocker's own Joe Dorsey celebrating a birthday today. What was well. this, like Johnny Carson? Yeah, just, doing birthdays just, and stuff? just saying. Make your Planet Hollywood reservations now. Sign up for the main event draft now with all the uh, satellites, Dynasty. We still have Dynasty going on, people. Startups coming up, I think, uh, next Saturday. We have some startups uh, that, are, that have open spots. Definitely check that out. Uh, you will not be around next week. Is that correct? Uh, I believe I'll be at a trade show in Vegas. So you will not be here. You know who Probably will- not. There's a chance I might get back in time. Okay. Well, who will be here is a uh, career $20,000 winner in the FFPC. Ryan Thurlow is going to be oh, yeah, co- Ryan, yeah, he's co-hosting with me next week. Uh, a lot of great stuff there. Of course, he was the consolation winner in the High Society this year. Plays a lot You're of great, you great stuff. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll be just fine next week. Uh, Scott Engel and the uh, Fantasy Hall of Fame Hour is up next. If you're listening to the Fantasy Sports Radio Network, thanks so much for listening. I uh, appreciate you guys tuning in on a Thursday as well. Your early weekend starts now. This has been another episode of the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour presented by MyFFPC.com that was broadcast live and heard around the world. Eric and Dave will be back next week with more analysis, interviews, and advice from a guest much smarter than they are. Thanks for listening, and we'll talk with you again next week. Tim again, the sound that engine in is like a bird. You see fireworks, they call the tire skirt, the boulevard. I know how you work, I know just who you are. See, use a, use a, use a bitch, you almost probably switches. I was just thinking about this. I put this out on Twitter saying, okay, Eddie Lacy, Kobe Fleener, RG3, who's the guy that I need to get behind this year that's going to suck? You know, I got yeah, I got that sweet answer. Yeah, so okay. I got, I, there was a, a bunch of responses. Honestly, the guy, Tupacker probably hit it. Probably Mark Davis probably at this point. Um, <laughs> That's actually good. Uh, totally good because he could easily bust. Right. And, and he's got all, like, the hype behind yeah. him. Um, maybe i got to start liking Adrian Peterson so we can make that uh, way good. Ah, let's get AP going. Well, we'll see. That works. It's going to be tough for me to do, but for you, Dave, <laughs> I'll do anything. Thank you. A seatbelt can stop you from going into a store. A seatbelt can stop you from climbing a tree. It can stop you from flying or from rolling down a hill. A seatbelt can stop you from doing a lot of things, like crushing bones and damaging vital organs. It can even save your life. That's why we enforce seatbelt laws, to save lives. So buckle up every trip, every time. Click it or tick it. Paid for by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Hurry into Old Navy tomorrow and Sunday to get jeans for the whole family on sale. Just $15 for adults, $12 for kids. Plus, starting tomorrow, redeem your super cash to save even more at Old Navy and OldNavy.com. Super cash valid 6-3 to 6-11. Jeans valid 6-3 to 6-4. Select styles only.